Okay, perfect. Um, thank you very much for being here. I really want to be quick with my part and go like um, through a first half where, well, I'm gonna present a little bit, show a few photos, show a, um, like a table of the benefits of nature for children, children's development. And then I really would like to go into a discussion or an exchange. So I really want to be uh, quick with my um, talk on this. Um, uh, first of all, uh, presenting myself, I'm Gabriel. I'm in Tenerife, Spain. We have since 2016 a school, a democratic, free democratic school in nature. We at the seaside, it's called Playa Escuela, which means beach school. And so the concept is being out in nature, being in a democratic um, approach, pedagogical approach, which is uh, free democratic, but having it at least the mornings in, in wild nature, really in, in uh, yeah, hard wild nature. Sometimes it's hard. So at the end, my discussion, I already gonna um, take it um, before. It's a little bit um, to this questioning. Um, da, do the benefits of nature justify that we put this setting like um, for kids, um, like maybe already forcing them a little bit because we know that some kids in our experience uh, would prefer to be in a more comfortable environment like sitting on a couch or being inside with toys or, or other kind of material like computers or something. So for me, the question I would like to discuss later is mainly this, like, are we forcing kids? Are we not respecting their right of free de de determination? Um, or does the nature as um, our like evolutionary development space, which has been over thousands of millions of years, maybe, do the benefits uh, justify to like um, put the setting there? So this is a little bit the, the discussion or the exchange I'm, I'm looking for, but I'm gonna uh, just show a few photos and show the table of the benefits of nature. So I'm gonna share my screen and go for a few photos. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, can you? Can everybody see the screen? Short feedback. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Great. Thank oh, you. Yes. Okay. So, well, this is our logo from our school, where you can see like the the humans um, in between the the nature, the animals. So this connection is really important to us and understand ourselves as well part of nature. So let's see if I get the next one. Yeah, here this is one scene um, of a typical circle we have there at our beach. I'm I'm gonna try be really short because uh, really yeah really fast because I could talk about every picture we could be talking minutes. So I really want to go quick and so you just have a few uh, impressions, okay? So this is like our classroom and there you already can see like the difference, yeah, of a uh, like a house environment to uh, wild nature. Kids enjoying freedom out there. And I have to say that, of course, we are very um, lucky in Tenerife. We have incredible conditions and incredible uh, environment. But I also worked in Germany in winter in a forest kindergarten and I have to say nature is beautiful everywhere because obviously it's in Tenerife, people could say, yeah, in Tenerife, the conditions are, are special, but I really want to say um, that nature is beautiful everywhere. And this is, you know, just like the comparison of the children sitting here on the rocks to having them sit in, sitting, sitting them on, on, in a room on, on uh, chairs, or on couches, is just uh, very symbolic already to me. And we could be talking about a lot of things, the freedom of movement, all the stimulus, and well, we will do it a little bit later. We could talk, this um, image um, could be um, interpreted 
about the gender role, seeing like uh, like a sweet little girl like this one also likes to be wild and jump. Obviously, nowadays we, it's even like not political correct even to pronounce what I just said, but this is like just one of the um, aspects of nature offering this neutral field of development to boys and girls equally. So these are just a few examples how they move, how they enjoy the sensorial, sensorial uh, stimulus, the freedom, the light, so many things to comment here. For example, on this image, uh, the, the sand level went down because after a storm, um, usually there's more sand and suddenly the, the sea took away the sand and the rocks looked out. And this is like a new, new situation, like the, the sand, uh, well, the beach where we always were, like changed and they discovered like a new um, new possibilities and this is like um, diversity and the richness which in my opinion well is what nature offers to us which is like full of infinity of miracles this is actually um, here a good example back there it's me and this is my own son here exploring actually today we were on a, also at the shore at the, um, we changed place I put it in a few photos and well, this is just one example of also the animals, the creatures we found in, in nature, we find in nature and they're so amazing. And I think when we talk about learning, it's so much to learn, not just to develop, which is the most important to us, but also the, the learning being in contact in, with nature. And I don't know if you heard about the sentence, which says uh, that nature is the biggest book you can study. So it's full of little details and wonders and miracles. And this is just one of it. This is a little sea snail. It's like half transparent. And the, the outside is like with a rainbow, um, like, um, well, like shining rainbow. It's amazing. Very, very beautiful. And the contact, the, the relationship the kids uh, establish with, with nature, obviously. Here you see a girl having a little crab in her hand. So they, um, the way they connect, this photo actually is from this morning. So I took it in last minute and just at the tide pools, we discovered uh, so cool things. Here you can see me and my, my colleague, Yulan. She's actually a doctor of biology. And so here you have also a few of our older children. And what we're looking on there are this eggs, this like uh, eggs of a sea slug. Okay, and I think these are just very little examples of all the things we can find and learn in, in nature. This, who knows what this is? Someone wants a, someone knows what this is? Someone wants to give a try? Nobody knows. Yeah, I try. Yes. Is it a, a skeleton of a, a seashell? Yeah, but a very special one. Yes, I don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, this is uh, like an octopus where the female, wow. this, is, this photo is not from us, this is from internet. But you see, it's the same shell. Okay, we found this at the, at the beach. We found this at our beach a few weeks ago, and we looked up wh where it belongs to. And this is a, a kind of octopus where the female, which is bigger than the male, builds this um, thin shells to have the eggs. And you see, can you see here the little eggs looking out because it, it cracked and the eggs are looking out. So these are just um, very beautiful examples how kids um, yeah, connect and learn in nature. And this, yeah, I'm repeating already. So this richness and here, the, well, you see the, the moth or the, the butterfly. And um, we found this later and like, this details and like there's just a little piece and there's so much to learn and yeah just little examples i go i go through it this was after the rain this is a little bit the landscape the freedom the the wideness the, the nature offers to us this is actually behind the hill behind is the volcanic cone it's the biggest uh, volcano in diameter of uh, tenerife and here also, it's not just about learning nature, it's also about creativity, pure creativity. And this is one of my favorite pictures. 
you have a girl and nobody told her, nobody's giving her like an art workshop. Um, and she just goes there and, um, well, draws this incredible creature, which is so amazing to me. And, well, it's just um, not just talking about what they can learn, it's also about creativity. Yeah, and enjoying and, yeah, it's a physical experiment. Well, this were just a few impressions. And I would like to go on. I prepared, um, this is from a German book, which is um, name is Startkapital Natur, which means like, what would, would be the best translation? Like, uh, well, starting capital nature. So it, it's um, like a summary of um, studies, scientific studies from different areas um, to show which benefits offer nature to children's development and there is one side where it's um zoomed up it's in german and this table i translated so i have it now here and we can go through uh, through it very quickly so it's like different areas this first table is about mental development it talks about the well-being like it improves well-being equalizes effects of negative life events reduces stress, it's about self-perception, it increases the self-esteem, improves the self-consciousness, improves the self-confidence, and then we can also talk about self-competence, improves creativity, improves the motivation to learn and explore, strengthens, strengthens excuse my English, self-discipline, promotes autonomy, improves concentration capacity, promotes linguistic competences, and also talking about academic competences, it um, stimulates learning processes and can improve learning uh, success. This is just very quick. Each of these points, you know, uh, you are most of you are uh, pedagogues, so you know words like autonomy are such a big concept. There's so much behind it. So, but well, we're gonna be quick and just go like um, yeah over it very quick. Talking about social development the social competences, improves social behavior, promotes cooperative, cooperative capacity, promotes communication capacity, the playing behavior gets more intense, is more uh, diverse and more creative. Physical development, the health promotes disease resistance, the movement, the, the motoric skills, outdoor kids move more, promotes motor skills and um, well, healthier body weight. And for example, recently a school in nature here in Spain made like a study comparing how much kids move in um, conventional house environments and in nature school. And they uh, made it over a morning. And the outcome was that uh, children it was, I think, kindergarten age. Um, in the normal environment, in the house environment, they made like, um, I think, one kilometer over the morning, like four hours, which is not so bad. But then they tried it with nature kids. And they, um, I think they made the first, if I remember well, they made the first kilometer already in the first half an hour. And at the end of the morning, it was 10 kilometers. And we are talking about, um, uh, kindergarten kids and well we could talk how important walking is for our um, body and our well-being but well, we have to be quick um, environmental consciousness this is i mean all pretty obvious like the connection with nature the environmental knowledge the environmental attitude and behavior i am not going to go more into details um the environmental learning the, envi the environmental learning can be successful because uh, what we can see is that we uh, try to have this um, environmental education to be become more conscious but well the outcome is not so good i think well we have to turn off the water when we brush our teeth and things like that but there's not like the necessary um, change we we really would need um so yeah this is i really want to be quick as i said so this was just a very quick um overview and um for me as i said i would like to go into an exchange 
and hear you and hear your opinions or your questions and don't have like a long talk myself. So for me, the question here I would like to um, put up is if we see that nature offers such a richness, so many benefits for children's development, is this right to put them out there or in order to achieve our democratic core fundamental perspective of self-determination are they are they um, like um, are they free to say no i'm i prefer to stay inside sitting on the couch and i have a few kids where i know they would prefer to be inside with the toys and with the with the books or doing whatever but taking them outside like even in a force we don't force them but like they have to be outside that we are in nature in the morning. And I think spontaneously about a few kids where I know even my own son, when we first go, went to the beach, he was afraid of the water. And over the time, now he, today we were diving with him. So for me, the question is, and this is like a core question of our whole approach, um, because the other way around, and we're gonna talk also about screen time and things like this. So. If we, the adults, see that things are harmful or benefit, so how much um, right do we have to to force them or not, or to prov um, or to um, pro pro no, not to provide? How do you, um, what is the right word? Sorry. Well, so this is a little bit. You, I think you got me. So this is for me the the core question here, which can be extended to other areas also. But this is something I observe. Maybe I'm wrong with my impression that many schools and many democratic schools are situated um, close to cities or in cities and mostly have like a house setting. And maybe they have a garden or a park, but this is not the same than wild nature, to me at least. So for me, um, yeah, this is the question I would like to exchange here. Uh, well, just I just open it up. Thank you very much. Just open your mics and start talking. Gabriel, would you please show me the one, uh, not the last slide, but the one before that? I want to read through it. Thank you. Environmental consciousness, connecting with connection with nature, experiences in nature together with social setting determine cosmic vision. This is very important because it makes a huge difference that if we go like take the kids out on their own in nature or if this experience happens in a social setting or in an, a social environment because when they are like playing with kids or having yeah this social for example today we saw we saw this uh, shell and which was so beautiful and they saw me and my colleague like fascinated, like really happy. And so the social environment or the social setting um, is really um, important. It's not just about the nature experience. It's really important to have it connected to, to the social setting. Um, the environmental knowledge, uh, being in nature promotes environmental knowledge. Knowledge of girls and boys is different. Here it comes to um, that girls know, it seems that girls know much more or, or quite a lot more about the flora and boys just a little bit more uh, about the fauna and um, environmental changes than girls. But just the, it seems that girls look, know much more and boys just a little bit more, more about uh, fauna. Also that kids with more knowledge about nature got less revulsion of fear and uh, the uh, environmental attitude and behavior. So the attitudes improve through being in nature. Kids take decisions for nature protection emotionally. So this is this um, emotional connection to nature that we only going to protect what we love, where we have a connection. Um, yeah, it's more difficult to influence behavior than attitudes or knowledge. So it's not just about knowing. A teacher, I went to a talk of a famous teacher here in Spain, and he said the kids learn so much about dogs that they are like mammals, that they are vertebrate animals, and all these technical issues. But anyway, 
in Spain, we have like thousands of lost dogs, uh, or how you say, when they just let it on the on the street every year. So we we know all about dogs, but there's not like a emotional connection. Okay, so. I actually was a bit worried. I'm happy with what I read. I was a bit worried that it's gonna be a kind of uh, well, this is provocative. I, I there is no 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 offense, but to me uh, it's like a kind of green religion that people are provoking to kids from very young age some kind of uh, environmentalist uh, behavioral. Uh, approaches that uh, actually at the end uh, might even cause more harm to the environment than benefit and uh, I was I just want I was curious if I see something like that in your list or not then and okay that that's great thank you yeah I agree we have I always say to my colleagues we have to be very careful to not like indoctrinate our kids like to become like um, ecologist uh, activists that this is not our intention it's about that offering them a healthy space for healthy development without this political intention yeah great because i've seen it in some of the democratic schools and that was not nice but but okay thank you any other comments or experiences or perspectives martina Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Martina from Brussels and I work in the Bos school. Uh, Bos, Bos means uh, forest. Um, and uh, um, so we are a democratic school in which the connection with nature is also very important. So we are in a city, but we are very lucky to be in a um, a park of with hec uh, eight hectares uh, with animals, farm, and we are five minutes to the forest, real forest. So uh, we are outdoor a lot of time, and um, and well, the, the 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 underpinning question of this debate it's it's really relevant for us because uh, has been in in our minds since uh, we opened the school. Um, we actually started uh, four years ago as a one day a week for a school. And, and we evolved toward um, a democratic school. Um, and so this, uh, uh, we have been a lot reflecting on, on the tensions between um, inspiring children to be outdoor and, and respecting their, their times, as, as, as Gabriel was saying. And uh, we still don't have 100% the answer to that. Um, but what, uh, what we arrived to the conclusion at the moment is that uh, uh, we use the indoor and the outdoor at the same time and we bring inspirations uh, like every one of us inspires the others in the outdoor and in, in the indoor space. Um, at the same time, during the, this year, for instance, during the, um, the school meeting, uh, um, we decide to go to the forest once a week, every Monday. So uh, that's something that we decide together and uh, and since it has been decided, we, we, we do it like uh, frequently because it has been agreed by everyone. Um, I also see that for us, the, the weather changed a lot perspective. So in, in winter, um, um, we all want to be much more indoor and, and now we are always uh, outside. So this, this changed very much. Um, and it's true that um, that there are some children that um, that would like to stay much more indoor, and then uh, um, we need to respect more their their time in order to um, um, to to get used also to to the the, the forest, to the outdoor, also in different weathers. Um, but for us, it's been really really challenging. Uh, 
within the team uh, posing this question with, it, uh, with the children, trying to understand with them and also with the parents. Uh, some parents came with a high expectation of, uh, uh, oh yes, you, you, you are in a natural setting, so you have to be outdoor all the time, or you know, um, we want this. And, and others that were like, oh no, but you're forcing our kids to be outdoor. So this, this is a reflection that, um, yeah, that took us a lot of time, a lot of also energies and, and um, to, to position ourselves uh, on that. Uh, still, I still don't have 100% the answer. And as you said, uh, it's connected to more general um, frame questions about uh, uh, what's this, the limit uh, to, to inspire children and to suggest them um, uh, things that, uh, that we think are, are positive for them within a democratic school context. So I don't have answer, just a reflection from, from our experience. Thank you very much, Martina, for sharing your experience and your perspective. This is exactly the point. And I'm happy to hear that you have similar like tensions or fields of tensions, which is, well, um, I don't know. So if you were raising the hand to say something. Yes, in order to consider the question, I would like two clarifications. One is how do you make decisions? And two is, do you have an indoor option when you're in nature, it looks like you're in the wilderness, so I'm guessing not. Well, this decision is like set it. We, are, we have this structure that we are in the morning in the nature and there's like no discussion about it. For now, at least we will see in the, in the future, uh, but there's the option to be at the afternoon. We have like a physical place. So the concept is morning nature, afternoon, like physical space, which is like a little farm, a little bit, a little finca, where they have also this, um, this other cultural materials and stuff like that. So this is our, our combination, but that we are in nature more in the mornings. This year, it helped a little bit because um, with the crisis, with the COVID crisis, it was easier to argue that it's better to be outdoors on the on, on the fresh air also and not be all there concentrated in the room. So this was a little bit an excuse we used. But um, yeah, this is a little bit the question. And for me, I see so many benefits in nature that it's like um, it has been our natural development field over maybe millions of years. So is it really so important what we also about just physiological problems. I just read um, an article or a news. <laughs> they're saying that like 50% of the kids are getting like uh, problems with the eyes because they're not like used to look into the forest. So having them inside is like really in some way harming them. So this is like the question, if it's really that important and that healthy and that rich to have them outside, is it about us? Um, even if we have to force them out of their comfort zone. And this is what, where I come and I stand for this um, position where I say like, you have to be outside, um, I don't know, a few hours a day at least, at least to a certain age. Maybe it doesn't work when they become 12 or 13 and then we have to let it go. But at a certain age, I think there are so many benefits and so important development fields, so many compared to, to the closed space that I, what my experience is that I don't want to miss it. And so this is, but comparing it to the other side, like do we let the children like really let choose if they want to be on the tablet all day long? Is this right? I, don't, I know that many democratic schools say yes and they do it. And I, um, I wonder, I still, uh, we have a, a talk about that. But for me, it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's this, this is, well, this is really tricky to me, but for me right now, our position is, yes, nature is important. Nature is um, very um, rich and benefit for you. So you have to be at least three to four hours outside, how it was over millions of years or thousands of years. So you decide, one person. 
well, the association was set up like this. The association was set up as, um, as a nature school and the, the parents decide. This is uh, like the parents with come, which come with us know that and they decide this for the kids. Okay, thank you. So it's a decision adults take over children. But it looks like that the children truly enjoy it and truly uh, find their own uh, benefits. And your experience is that they uh, overcome their own boundaries. So that's a good, uh, it's also about experience. Huh? What, what, what you experience with your kids. And I think even in nature, you can be really democratic and uh, agile and all the rest. And it's always interesting in every democratic school, eh? uh, what, I, what did you opt for and how are you gonna give it form? Even a democratic school with all freedom is already it's also developed by <laughs> grown-ups, but you develop together with the students into the, the best ways and means. And I think in your school, how, how old is your school or how young? Uh, we're finishing our fifth year. We started okay. 2016 and yeah. the oldest kids right now are becoming 11. So okay. they're quite young still. Yeah. And uh, till what age are you going along? 16, 18, or? No limit, growing no upwards. Li okay, <laughs> yeah. So I think the school will uh, also um, develop with the kids as well, because do you have democratic circles or sociocratic circles or whatever? How do you, how do, you do that? Yes, we have assemblies and circles, and so we have this, this structures, and we, we have them every day, every day twice. So we have that, and we yeah. plan excursions, so we, we split, or we decide what activities we want to do, so we have that. Mm -hmm. But the, the setting that we meet outside, is, this is like set it, and who knows what happens in the future, but right now it's like that. Yeah, we have the setting to, to be a democratic school and a lot of kids don't want to be. They, they don't want to make, they want to, don't want to be involved in the decision making. And that's our problem sometimes. <laughs> they just want to be. So I think it's something which always is in the process of a school and how you want, yeah, how you want to build it. What I see is, is beautiful pictures, of course. And what, what we do in our school, um, it's about the passion of uh, the, the teachers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's the passion of the teachers. And um, we have a wonderful uh, uh, place to be. I don't know if you ever saw our website, but we have two and a half hectares, a beautiful greenery around us. And we are next to a forest and sand dunes. And it's totally amazing for Holland <laughs> that we have this kind of location. And what we do, what, what we do is um, one of, my, of our teachers, they, they make an insect circle. And, they, and then they, they go with a group, volunteer, voluntary, uh, on excursion every day to search insects and to find their names and how they live and how they, you know, the whole, the whole learning curve. We go for bushcrafts, we go playing in the, in the dunes. We, they play outside the whole day with the bare feet in the grass and things like that. And I'll, I also think it's essential for kids to, to have that uh, experience. And um, a lot of kid, kids don't want to be in a circle or in, uh, in a class in the outside. But what I always see and what I trust is they play outside the whole day and they make uh, woodcrafts and they make huts and 
uh, secret huts and you know then they find all these kind of treasures which they come and and, and show us i also think that um that that's uh, yeah it, it should be in every school that, that that they have that space and that they can explore and i i totally agree that there's a lot of learning possibilities and i like it how you say how you make that in uh, from that book huh? that, that you really can see what they learn from it because sometimes we oversee that we we don't take that as serious as it should because i think they learn a lot from being in a natural environment so thank you so much yeah and i wanted to say that like the putting them into a house setting we like pre-establish what they like because their desk their books they are like tools there is an atelier and like this is also like preset and this is also reducing like really the, the creativity and the but not just in an artistic sense but what i wanted to ask you dorian is um do they have inside free access to in your case unlimited uh, access to, to screens to computers to tablets and computer games like this um yes uh, but we have different domains for the young kids from four till ten. We agreed together, and they were really happy, that we only have one hour screen time. And they can play games. And they enjoy it very much, and they're all together, and they do it. And for the rest of the time, they play, play, play. And before that, they were free to, to, uh, to do whatever they liked. And... Um, and they were really complaining, I want to go outside, but all my friends are behind the computer and I don't know what to do. So then we made a big circle and we say, listen, this is, this is the problem. For who is that mo uh, problem more? Uh, do, you, do you feel that as well? And they all said, yes, it's all our problem. So then we came back to one hour a day. And in the second domain, 10 till 15, we make a, a real difference of screen uh, handling uh, because you have to look up things, you have to talk with your parents uh, or uh, you have that all these kind of uh, social media. Uh, you want to see a constructive film, you want to learn from the computer. So you learn about using the computer on a, on, on a practical way and not only for gaming. And, there are a lot of kids really into gaming and I really love them. And it's a special kind of kids. And I call them the, my ITers. Do you know? They are totally into it. They are so much into the computer and they can design and they make pictures. And they. I come with my problems to them with my computer and I say, boys, my computer is not doing what I want. Tell me what to do. And they, they tell me what to do. And I always say, We'll meet again in Silicon Valley and you will be the, the, the professionals in that case. But that's only say 10% of the whole uh, community. And I think, okay, for these kids, this is their world and they make their, their whole exploration. And I love them. And the other 90%, they have other, you know, uh, passions. And I, in, the, in the, the years of experience now, I trust that completely that that it will be okay and when we see a kid alone and totally in then we talk with the person but when they're all bright together exploring i'm not i'm not worried about it there a second <laughs> yeah okay thank you very much i ask this because this is one of my concerns and there are studies which show that nature becomes like less attractive as more um, access to, to screens, like more screens, less attractive becomes nature. But this, this is a little bit my concern where we're moving to and we still don't have like this screen time, but it's, we're holding it back. But well, this is like a little bit my concern. Okay, we got like 15 minutes left. Who else wants to say something? Just open your mics and... Okay. Um, I just wanted to reflect on uh, your presentation. It's obvious that uh, nature schools are uh, benefiting children. Um, 
in their development. But uh, my concern is that um, uh, how is this feasible? I mean, and accessible to the majority of children who are stuck in the urban environment and in the cities, as we know, considering that the, the majority of the population is concentrated in, in the cities. So is this, how, how do you see, how do you uh, consider this uh, concern? I mean, is it possible? And is it, I mean, can you replicate the forest school in an urban environment? Well, what I don't have um, really experience uh, in urban environments, but I would say, as Martina just said it, many schools have, like, um, yeah, even in um, urban environments, you have uh, close by parks or like the border of the city. Usually, if it's not a very, very big city, it's not so far away, you know. So maybe it's 15, 20 minutes with the public um, transport and you're out. And the, the borders of the city where you already have the fields beginning. So this is what I heard about this issue, but I don't have personal um, experience with it. I don't know if, if Martina or someone else wants to share their experience. Well, I think this opens up a question that uh, it's um, in big city, it really relates with the, the inequality of access to green areas, um, which I think is really pertinent um, because um, it's all, all, always, always the case in that uh, more uh, popular areas has less access to, to green spaces. Um, so that's unfortunately the reality. Um, Although there is always possibility to be more creative and to find a way to, to being outdoor, you don't have to be in a forest. Town. Uh, outdoor can be everything, can, can be a beach, can be just the street. I mean, the street is, is the outdoor, it's what you have in the contest that, that you have. I think it's, it's a more, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a special context. The, the concept, the forest school is not the forest itself, it's just being outside and connect with, with others. Um, so definitely there are limitations uh, con connected with, uh, you know, the, 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 the place where you are and, uh, and the access to nature. But I don't think that it, it's um, the fact that not every school can access to, to nature would, would limit the fact that it's important to take advantage of it. I would like to add the reflection that cities as um, living spaces economically seen, are they, how sustainable are they really? This is gonna be a question in the future, like the city as um, living structure is depending from uh, such a high infrastructure, technical high infrastructure. And is this gonna be like really sustainable on a long term in the future? And which decision do, do I take as a family to live in such an artificial environment? Or is this, is this really sustainable? Is a city a sustainable environment or a, a sustainable structure as a living organism? Or do they depend so much on this infrastructure, which is not really um, gonna be sustainable on a long term? So maybe cities are gonna be there for a few more decades and then they're gonna collapse maybe. I don't know, I, it I wouldn't wonder. So just don't know. Someone else. There are many people who don't say nothing. So I was Ten really looking, I was really looking yeah. forward to discussion discussing Gabriel's uh, initial question, which I love. The way I understood it was what kind of democracy is the adults deciding the basic context? for the democratic learning that's gonna to happen to the minors without the minors in that initial decision. And I would appreciate it if we focus the last few minutes on that question. I think it's a great question. Yeah, I, I would like to turn it around. It's like when we put them into a house, we also take this decision and we're limiting them also. So this is like the, the switch because we are so used to talk about schools as a building, 
and like nature is actually the more neutral space but i already said that so i don't know if someone wants to add something maybe we would say if you want a house you have to build it yourself so let's go and build a house <laughs> Yes, that's a good one. You can do that in nature. Come on. We do, we do. The kids, a few weeks ago, we were like in a space where we were like below a bridge and the boy said, I want to build a bridge like this. Well, I said, well, we can build a bridge with a few sticks or some of three stones. No, no, no. I want a bridge like this with, with huge machines and stuff. We're like, okay, let's go for it. So yeah, they, they want to build houses and they do playful in a playful way. Obviously they do like build their little huts in between the bushes and stuff. So that's, that's really sweet, but yeah. yeah. We, we are in, the, in our school in a process of building your dream school. What do you need in your dream school? We are, we are now 18 years young and we are a bit uh, stuck in, 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 in certain ways and means and we said we sh reshuffle everything we start all over again what do we want for our new school we make a new space right? our room our school is named space uh, the gift space and um, do you do yeah these are nice discussions in a democratic edu uh, education environment to let the kids think of what what is important to them and then you have a basic that's not coming from adults, also from adults, because I'm going to say what I, I think is important. And, and they, we all can say what is important. And after four weeks, we have a project of four weeks now going on. And after this four weeks, we're going to look at it all and we make a new plan for next year. Is that something what could happen in your school? Yes, obviously we want them. I mean, it's also our school is still young and we have young children. The oldest ones, a few of them are 10 to 11. So this is like also depending on the age when they become like teenagers and like more mature and more capable of, of this kind of um, yeah, projects. So I would love to, and I'm open also to it, but we'll, we'll see. Because we try to find the, the democratic uh, structure eh? and the, the freedom of learning and the intrin intrinsic motivation of the kids. I think that's our journey, what we are doing. If we make a building or we make a nature school or whatever we do, it's all wonderful. Uh, but I think that's always our job to listen well and to ask and to develop and make changes. I think that's part of a democratic environment. Yes, but I would like, um, for me it's important to put like the word nature into this movement because I compare it a little bit like when Peter Gray says like, I don't know if you heard this from him that he read this like, huge book about psychology where not once the word play appeared. He says that like uh, there is like a classical thing about uh, psychology or, or children's psychology or whatever and there's not once the word play so how is it possible and for me is this like the same how is it possible that we talk about education and the word nature doesn't appear you know so for me was it important like if we have this conference a whole weekend or there's a movement like UDEC talking about um, education, like one, like play, like is one of the central pillars or central concepts to us, like the free play or the age mixing, as Charlie said in his introduction. So for me, that we have to put nature also there, like one of the core values. So I know many schools have like a, a certain connection to, to, to nature, but for me, it's like, so such a fundamental, yeah, div, yeah. You got me. So this is what yeah, I, I, I want to promote I, here. I got you completely. And for the people in the cities who are maybe jealous of your beautiful environment there at Tenerife, I also think in the urban urban cities, it's even uh, more a challenge to find nature. Because even in the urban cities, there's nature hidden maybe, but you can find it. 
and you can talk about um, about the sustainabilities of cities and you can use that also as a beautiful learning environment so i, I don't think one is better than the other you know it, it, it's it's we have to to yeah we have to grab grasp our opportunities always and it's holistic it can be all the time holistic but thank you for your passion and i i totally <laughs> I'm a fan of your beautiful school. <laughs> I, I'm feeling that as educators, our founders of such a project, maybe it's adult guilt that um, makes us wonder if this is fair to make time in fair to the children time and nature obligatory and like you said in terms of options the option of having obligatory time in nature the options for this are much less than um, the other setting the house setting as you call it so for me personally the in terms of the adults who set up these projects I admire that there, that the, there is this wondering and this questioning. And the more I'm processing your question, the more I feel that in the end, this question filters down to the decision made in the family to go to the school. Mm. And it, 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 it's off the shoulders of the founders and the educators. And then the question is, what say do the children have in their family as to whether they participate in this project. And it's interesting that the educators and the founders of the projects take this on, take this responsibility and maybe the guilt and the anxiety or the worry about whether this is fair on. And actually it's, it's, it's in the family. It's not in, maybe not, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be something that the educators and the founders, directors of the project should be uh, busy with, I think it's wonderful that they are, but the actual decision making process that this question leads my thinking to is the family and the decision to go to this school. Exactly. And here, like in democratic, what we see that people of parents talking about parents that it's hard for them to trust in the potential of their ch kill, uh, children to develop their own potential many times is when they don't have mm, barely developed their own development. And this is what I see with nature, that people who are really connected to nature, who know how beautiful it is to go hiking on the mountains, to observe birds uh, mating, or to go diving, or what, you know, or just lie in the sand, or, or put some earth on your skin, or whatever, you know, people who is a little bit connected to nature, know the value of it, you know, who, who is really a little bit connected. So this is what we see that people who are not connected to nature don't um, realize the value. But you can say, of course, you can say this about anything. People who is a musician will value music. The people who is spiritual will value spirituality. But I mean, I think nature is such a universal value that, well, but this is what I see that people say, but what, what do they learn in nature? Only a person who is not connected to nature is going to ask the question. A person who loves birds, a person who loves um, little creatures, a person who loves rainbows, a person who loves clouds, a person who loves to, to feel the wind in their hair, that they're not going to ask this, you know, because they, they know it very deeply. But okay, we're reaching the end of this workshop. Thank you, thank you very much. Excuse a little bit my nervosity. And yeah, I... I'm happy to receive you here in Tenerife if you need some vacation. Let's go diving together or surfing. Thank you very much. What about sailing? Too expensive. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'll bring my own boat. 